Hey guys, welcome to today's video. This channel is dedicated to helping you create the home of your dreams through DIYs, thrift flips, home renovation, and home product review. Today, we will be DIYing some really amazing projects out of this Ikea rug that I got for at $9.99. You guys, I cannot believe you can get a flat woven rug from Ikea for less than $10. It is just shy of four feet by six feet. It's 311 by 511. So the first thing that I really wanna do is make a flat bottom reusable grocery store tote bag thing because I've bought the tote bags from, you know, the individual stores, but then I feel really weird like taking a Trader Joe's bag into Target and vice versa. Do you do you guys feel me on this? So to get around all of those negative feelings and to make us feel more luxe and expansive, we will be making our own tote bag out of this $10 rug. Mm -hmm. I desperately need a laptop case, so we're gonna be making a laptop case out of this. And then with any scraps and remnants left over, I think I'm gonna make some plant bags, baskets, plant basket bags, whatever they're called, plant bags, gets. You'll see. <laughs> All right, so let's get to cutting this baby up and making our DIY. Got my coffee. Let's go make some fun DIYs. All right, so you have two options. You could seam rip out the hem right here, open it up, and then you'll have a little bit more extra fabric. Or if you just want, you can cut the hem off. Now I have quite a bit of fabric and this is gonna take me a long time to seam rip it out. Creases right here are gonna be kind of stuck in the fabric because this has been professionally pressed down. So what I'm gonna do is just cut along where the hem is, just cut it right on off. So this is the side hem that we just cut off. Now you could save this and use these as the straps for your bag. Or if you didn't want to do that, if you wanted to do some contrast, you could use something like this. This is a polyester, it's called a webbing. And it's, you know, it basically looks like a normal strap. But if you wanted to do like a contrasty thing, you could get some of this webbing. Or if you didn't want to buy another product, you could just use the hem. So I think I'm gonna be using this polyester webbing. I have navy and olive, and I got this in the city at Pacific Trimmings. I will link them below. They do ship if you can't find anything like this near you. You can buy, purchase this from Pacific Trimmings online and they will ship it to you. So I have all of my pieces cut out for the bag. This is gonna be the front and back of the tote. There's gonna be two sides and a bottom. The reason I did it in three pieces is because the I didn't have enough length to do the whole side and bottom in one strip. So it's okay, we're gonna have a seam along the, it's gonna be the bottom corner of the bag, but it'll actually make it a little bit more stable. So two sides, bottom, and then these are going to be my two pockets, one for the front, one for the back. First thing we're going to do is fold over the top of the pocket and then hem it. So when we put it on the front of the bag, it will be hemmed already. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this over to my ironing board. It's gonna fold over like a half an inch, press this down, it'll make it easier to do one stitch. And then we're gonna fold it over again to secure that first seam, press that down and sew that again. And then these pockets will be ready to go on the front and the back. Got the top flat pressed over about a half an inch. Now I'm just gonna do one stitch here. Turn this down really good, and then we're gonna put another stitch right here so the hem of the top of the pocket is done. And this is what it should look like once you are done. You won't really be able to see the stitching on the front. So now we have either the front or the back of our bag, it doesn't really matter. And we have our pocket that the top is hemmed. So we're just gonna place the pocket right in the middle of the front of our bag. And we're just gonna stitch down the sides right along here. And for this, I'm just gonna do a zigzag stitch so it's a little bit more secure. So I have this side stitched down. I went ahead and just stitched the bottom because this was starting to fray quite a bit. So then we just have to do this part right here and our first pocket is done. And we've got our pocket. And these seams are going to be covered by our straps. I kind of actually like that maybe a little bit better. Hmm. Front and back both have the pockets attached. Now we're gonna attach the sides to 
the bottom. And then once these are put together, we will attach it to the front and back. I have a side here. This is my bottom. I'm gonna put right sides together and sew at a half an inch seam allowance right here. All right, so I'm gonna do a tighter straight stitch. So I have my side sewn to my bottom. And now I'm gonna take the other side and sew that to the other side of the bottom. So side, bottom, side. I actually think I like this a little bit better than the polyester webbing, you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with this. Now it does have a little stitch right here that's kind of keeping everything together, but I'm planning on using this bag for a really long time. So I'm gonna go ahead and put another stitch just kind of right next to this stitch that's already here, just to make sure that this will hold up over time. Now, what I'm gonna do is place this right over the edge of our pocket. So it's going to hide that. Just match this up with the bottom, place this right on top. And then we're gonna stitch it onto the top with an edge stitch on both sides of the strap. So one over here and then one over here. But since we still have to finish the top up here, we're gonna fold it over, do a stitch, and then fold it over again to finish this off. So we're gonna leave like two inches up here where we're not gonna stitch this onto. We're just gonna come right up here and stop right about here so we have room to make a hem up here. But we're not gonna do the hem until we get the sides and bottom attached. So we're just gonna be doing this part for right now. This side stitch is on. Now we're just gonna close it in. So this is our edge of our pocket and then this is the edge of our strap. We're just gonna sew right here along the edge. So here is the first strap attached. Again, we left about two inches up at the top. Now, when you are going to attach your strap, make sure that you have it going the right way that you want, that there aren't any like twisties in here. Make sure that the strap on this bag matches the one on that bag so it'll hang evenly on your shoulder. And then just pin this down and attach this side. We now have our front and our back with our straps on, our little pockets on. Now it's time to attach the bottom and the sides to the fronts and backs. So what I'm going to do is right sides together. This is gonna be the front. This is the bottom. I'm gonna do the bottom first. So we're just gonna do a straight line here. And then we're gonna turn it and then do a straight line here and on this side. But I'm gonna start with the bottom seam first so I can make sure everything is centered. I've been having a lot of issues with my needle breaking so I'm gonna have to go really slowly but if you guys are gonna do this I suggest getting like a leather needle for a project like this when you're sewing with heavier textiles like a rug. Now we're gonna start kind of like a half an inch back so we have room to turn our seam and then catch the side. And I'm sewing at a half an inch seam allowance. So we have the bottom attached to the front. Now we just have to turn it and sew the sides together. So our bag is starting to take shape. Now we just have to attach the bottom and the sides to the other side. Now we have our back panel. We're just gonna be matching up the whole contraption we already got put together. Match up the bottom, I'm gonna do the bottom first, and then the sides, just how we did this side. Bottom is sewn on, needle has not broken again. Thank God. Now, I'm going like so gingerly with this needle because it's my last needle, and I don't want it to break. Moment of truth. Let's flip this baby right side out and see what we got. This is like totally cute, guys. Totes adorbs, y'all. Ooh, I'm kind of really digging the fringy on the top. I was going to fold it over and do a hem, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna open the seam allowance on the sides. I'm gonna do a stay stitch about an inch down, so then we can have like an inch of fringy on top. So a stay stitch is just literally like a straight stitch, and it stops the fraying from fraying past that line. So if you want some fringe, just do a stay stitch and then it'll fringe up into your stitch. Now you can just go in and pull all of the weft weaves out, which is the ones going left to right, 
And then all the warp weaves that are going up and down will be your fringe. Now what you're going to want to do is at the very top where the strap is at the top of the front and the back, sew a little box and then do an X in the middle. Now, since my needles have been breaking, I'm not going to do that right now because I have some other stuff to make. So once I get like a leather needle or a sturdier needle, I'm going to sew just a little box, like a one inch by one inch and then an X in the middle and that will reinforce all of the tops of the straps. Now, since this bag does not have a lining, if you wanted the inside seams to be finished, you could do a French seam. If you want to do that, just trim down your seam allowance. Then on the outside, kind of tuck all of that seam allowance that's on the inside in as far as you can. Then you're gonna stitch right on the outside. So you're gonna basically be encapsulating all of your inside seam allowance into an exterior seam like this. So that's a French seam if you want to be fancy, but I'm just going to leave it like this. I actually kind of like the fringy inside. It gives it some fun character and it's not going anywhere, but I, I really like this. I kind of want to have a little pocket for my bullet journal to go on top. Little slots over here for my pens. And this would just flap over. The first thing I'm going to do is stay stitch about a half an inch seam allowance all the way around because I am going to fringe it out. I'm also going to put a stay stitch right up here on top of the little pocket flap. I'm just going to stitch it right here at about three quarter inch seam allowance just on the side and then we're gonna put the book in and then see where we need to make this stitch and then we'll make the pleats on the bottom. Okay, so I'm just marking with a pencil right here because this has, it's pretty comfortable to get in and out. And then I'm just gonna mark with a pencil right here so I know where to stitch that line. So we're just gonna kind of make like a little corner pleat right here. Hold it to the outside. Okay, that kind of worked. I'm just going to stitch here, stitch here, and then make some stitches in the middle for pens. Put a little pen right here. Put a pencil here and then there's enough room for some Tombos or like paint brushes, whatever, scissors. Perfect. Yeah. Right, I'm just gonna sew this at about a half an inch seam allowance. Just go right along that stay stitch that we did in the very beginning. This is all of the leftover scrap that I have. I have three pretty large pieces and one little scrap, and then I have these left over. So we're gonna make some little baskets that you can put plants in, you could put utensils in, brushes in, whatever you want, and these are literally so easy. So, so easy. So we're gonna start with like a small-ish one so you guys can kind of get the idea. So basically, take whatever size fabric you want. We're gonna fold it in half. This is going to be my top. Once this is all sewn together, I'm gonna to fold it over. So there's gonna be some fringe around the outside of the basket. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is put a stay stitch right here and right here so we can fringe out the top of the basket but 
have that stitch in place so it doesn't fringe past that. So what I'm gonna do is put a straight stitch on these two sides, which will eventually be the top of the entire basket. And now I am just doing about an inch seam allowance because that'll give me the amount of fringe that I want. So now we're going to fold it in half and put a stitch right along the sides. So now we have like a little envelope with our stay stitch up here at the top. So what you're gonna wanna do while keeping it wrong sides out is fold the corner down like this to kind of make a little triangle. I'll show you that again. So you're basically folding it on itself. So you're making like a little pointy triangle right up in the corner. So once you have your little corner made, just open up your seam allowance and you're gonna stitch right here about an inch and a half, two inches in. Just like that, and then we're gonna stitch right here. Okay, and once you have your little triangle sewn down, you can trim off the excess. So that's one side. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Flatten out that corner so it makes a little point, and then open your seam allowance. Kind of just finger press that open, and then do a stitch right here, the same distance in you did the other side. So about an inch and a half or two inches. This is what your bag should look like inside out. Now let's turn it right sides out and see what we got going on. So you can keep it like this, put whatever you want in it, or you can fold it over to give it another little foldy look. It's so cute. Okay, let's make some bigger ones. <laughs> 